Multi-Finger Caliper MFC Interpretation Workflow. This video demonstrates the processing steps and interpretation methodology of multi-finger caliper data using MROD, from raw finger data to final statistics on pipe integrity. First, create a new document from scratch. Click on Load and select the file containing the raw MFC data in LAS, LIS, or DLIS format. Some mnemonics were not recognized. These are not going to be defined at this stage. The measured radius by each of the 40 fingers is present in the file. Change the pass type to MFC. As soon as one of the columns is defined as radius, all the other columns with the same mnemonic root will also be considered as radii. In the event that the tool being loaded is previously undefined, a new mnemonic root can be added with the MFC root button. Click on Import. From the MFC information window, it is possible to assign a name to the dataset and to modify such items as the API penetration tolerance and color scales. From the Diameters tab, define the dimensions of the logged pipes. A catalog is available which provides nominal ID, OD, and drift ID values for each pipe weight. Clicking OK, MROD loads the data, plots the MFC array, and obtains statistics. Note that these should not be used in this case to reach conclusions about the pipe integrity as the data has yet to be processed. However, if processed data is loaded, then the statistics will be valid. The MFC diagnostics shows the main results of penetration and deposition, using color fillings with the nominal pipe diameters as a reference. The MFC processing options can be accessed either by right-clicking on the MFC image and selecting Explore, or from the special tab, Processing. The MFC image shows the unwrapped finger's radius by default accounting for relative bearing with the color scale ranging from Drift ID to OD. At any depth, it is possible to display the finger radius by interactively selecting the depth from the image. The distribution of the measured radii is a clear indication of tool eccentricity. Zoom in to find some penetration features. At this depth, it can be seen that three fingers are sensing the penetration. Click on Centralization. By default, an eclipse will be fitted to the finger's radius. Exclude four fingers from the fitting process, since the variation of radii corresponding to penetration or deposition should not be considered. Click OK. The centralization is the process that takes the longest, since at each depth, the data is fitted twice in order to recompute the finger position. Zoom in on the log by pressing Ctrl and scrolling. A cross section helps to describe the internal shape of the pipe. Navigating with the arrows, it is possible to display the depths previously extracted. Click the Markers option. The blue points show the fingers that have been excluded from the centralization, making this process completely transparent. Unchecking the bearing correction, the image will display the fingers from 1 to 40, from left to right. This helps understanding if a feature is real or an artifact of a malfunctioning finger. Zoom in again. 
Consider that this radius reduction is not a true representation of the internal pipe shape, and deletion is therefore necessary. Right-click on the image, select Edit and Bad Fingers Interactive. Draw a box around this feature. These fingers will be replaced by an average of those adjacent. Resetting the zoom, observe the striped character of the MFC fingers. This indicates that recalibration is required using a known ID, a median, or mean value. The data is now ready for statistics extraction. These are automatically recomputed after each processing step and can be displayed from the Show button. Metal loss, ovalization, and penetration will be shown here. The statistics are presented as continuous logs covering the whole logged interval. The typical presentation of results, however, is done per joint. The sharp variations of penetration or metal loss indicate the location of the connections. Click on Interactive. A vertical line will appear, which acts as a threshold value. When a log crosses the threshold, MROD will define a joint. Observe that the joints were not correctly identified at the base of the log. Zooming in, it is clear that the threshold does not cut the peaks on the metal loss log corresponding to the connections. Right-clicking on the track, it is possible to redefine the threshold for a certain depth interval. Some joints still have not been identified. In the Joints table, it is possible to modify the minimum joint length setting to account for dimensional variations. By shortening the length and recomputing, MROD has now identified most of the joints. If the joint is still not identified using threshold and length settings, this can be done manually. Look at the joints table. The computed diameters and statistics are displayed per joint. The Show One option zooms over the current joint. Leave the Explore by clicking OK. The main MROD window shows the recomputed statistics and MFC image. From here it is possible to integrate the results with any other type of log. It is possible to display any curve in a new user view, simply by drag and drop from the MROD browser. The Joints table can be accessed from the Special tab. Here the histogram of penetration per joint is also displayed. This concludes this video on MFC interpretation.